Hello guys and welcome back to Sonic Origins. In the last episode of Fedora Remember, we went ahead, started up Sonic CD, and we started fighting against Dr. Eggman, who this time has chained an entire planet to Earth, and is now using the time stones and time travel to create a, you know, dystopian robot-filled future that we now have to fight against because, you know, from what we've seen, that future is very, very bad. In this episode, we're gonna continue on fighting, hopefully get to the end, and beat Dr. Eggman. If we can't, that's fine, but, you know, we're progressing through this game at a pretty good pace. Holy crap, going super fast. <laughs> I mean, that's expected because it's Sonic, but usually I'm not very good at the 2D side-scrollers, and so I'm not very good at going fast. So this game actually has an updated version called Sonic Origins Plus. It's pretty much the same except you can play as Amy in uh, Sonic CD and there are also uh, some additional Game Gear games that you can play in the extras menu, I believe. And the Game Gear games are, you know, they they there's a very big range in quality when it comes to those games. For example, I think Sonic Chaos and Sonic Triple Trouble are pretty fun. Uh, the 8-bit versions of Sonic 1 and 2, however, are not. <laughs> and Sonic Spinball, I haven't finished, but that game is not very fun to play through either. There's also Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, which is a very... which is a Sonic version of the game Puyo Puyo. Uh, and I'm not very good at that game, so I never even got past the second level of Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, so don't expect a Let's Play of that game anytime soon. <laughs> one in one well-known piece of Sonic trivia is that there's like a, a creepy secret screen. I forget what the, like how you get there or what it means. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and research that a bit, and then I'll edit in some audio here in post, uh, explaining that, so here you go. Alright, what I was referring to here, uh, was Majin Sonic, which is in reference to the secret screen, uh, in Sonic CD, where if you input a certain cheat code on the title screen, you'll get taken to this weird, creepy screen with this weird, creepy music. Um, and it has this message on screen, uh, fun is infinite with Sega Enterprises, and it's signed by Majin. So people have dubbed this weird, creepy version of Sonic as Majin Sonic, um, and he has his own history, um, but he's very iconic. But yeah, back to the video. Alright, the third act of, uh, of Quartz Quadrant, that's what it's called. It was just on screen, I don't know how I already forgot it. So, um, this entire level is, you know, based around conveyor belts and stuff like that. So of course, the boss fight is one giant conveyor belt. What you want to do for this is run forward, wait for the ball to drop on you, and then go back towards the left side of the room. Keep jumping, though, because you don't want to crash into the spikes back there, because, you know, they're spikes. You'll lose your rings if that happens. Oh, just as I say that, I immediately run into the spikes. Anyways, not much else to do. Just wait for the balls to keep dropping, or whatever they're called. And then, eventually, Eggman's little, you know thing here will drop completely to the ground. You know, you see he's getting nervous there. Just gotta wait for one more of these. Or two more, I guess. Nope, one more. And then he runs off, it explodes, and we have beaten yet another zone. Around. 
I'll never get used to calling them rounds, so I might as well just call them zones. Or wait, no, because, yeah, acts are called zones in this game. Because we're playing through the fourth world, and that was level three. So, yeah. Sorry if I keep using the classic, uh, like, the Sonic 1, 2, and 3 terminology. It's just very weird to get used to. This is Wacky Workbench. This one is, um, another one that, this, this is a level that I actually remember, because the whole point of this level is that you're constantly being thrown up into the air by the, uh, by the ground down there. For, for some reason, you know, it's, it's very bouncy, so it keeps throwing you up and you have to platform your way down. It's a very interesting concept. How well it does it using that concept is... Well, that's in the eye of the beholder. Soundtrack is just as incredible as any other level, though, so it's not like this level's all bad. Gosh, I forget, what does the future version of this level look like? Oh god, it's hell. <laughs> It's very interesting how they had to create, you know, different versions of each, uh, level theme. Because they had to create create one for the present, they had to create one for the past, they had to create one for the bad future, and then they had to create one for the good future. I'm, I don't know how you get past this part. <laughs> ah, here you go. Again, this level has a very cool concept, but in the, e in the end, it just kind of comes off as annoying. There's a specific gimmick that they do in this game that I think is very funny. I forget if it's in this level, though, or if it's in a future level. Not as in, like, time travel future, but, like, in a level that is after this level. <laughs> so, I believe there's actually, um, this game was actually created for what is known as the Sega CD. Um, you know, that's why this game is called Sonic CD. And that add-on, um, did not sell well, because whenever companies try to you know, try to sell an add-on to the- ah, oh, crap. Whenever companies try to sell an add-on to their, you know, consoles, it usually doesn't go very well. Nintendo later did the same thing with the Nintendo 64 disk drive, and that did not sell well at all. Further going- one thing I'd like to mention further about the development of this game is that when creating a sequel for Sonic the Hedgehog, because it was such a huge success that, of course, they were going to make a sequel. They split into two teams, which was Sega of Japan and Sega of America. Um, or, I forget if it was Sega of America and Japan, or if it was Sonic Team Japan and Sonic Team America. Point is, there were the people in Japan who were working on this game, Sonic CD, and there were the people in America who were working on Sonic 2. Um, and they were both competing to become Sonic the Hedgehog 2, um, but of course, the American one released first, it got to name itself Sonic 2, and this one released afterwards and had to name itself after the Sega CD add-on. Makes me very curious as to what they would have called Sonic 2 if, Se if uh, Sonic CD released first, because, you know, then Sonic CD would be called Sonic 2, and then what would they call, you know, this game with, uh, Tails? Maybe they would have called it Sonic and Tails if that had released first, which is funny because um, Sonic Chaos in Japan is called Sonic and Tails, and Triple Trouble is Sonic and Tails 2. Alright, so it's the boss fight for this one around the... Alright, so we've gotten to the boss fight. This is called the Egg Razor, and it's not called the Egg Razor because, you know, of blades or anything like that. Although it is spelt like that, I believe it's called the Egg Razor because you're being raised up into the sky. Maybe it was like a translation thing. Um, 
where in Japan it was called the Egg Razor. Like, Razor was, you know, the English word. Like, Razor was an English word. Um, or at least it tried to sound like an... They tried to make it sound like an English word. And then, when translated, they called it R-E... Or R-A-Z-E-R. -E or something like that. That's just speculation, though. I'm not entirely sure if I'm right or if my egg razor pun was even accurate. I accidentally squished myself. Oh, I forgot that... Yeah. For a second, I was like, wait, did it really put me at the, at the beginning of the level? And I was like, oh, wait, no. You know... This entire level is dedicated to a boss fight, of course, they would put you at the beginning. One complaint that uh, I and many people have with the original Sonic the Hedgehog is how they dispersed the game into three acts. Um, there's Act 1 and 2, which are normal levels, and then Act 3, which is also a normal level, but with a boss fight at the end. In this game, they shortened it a bit by making Act 1 and 2 um, full levels, and then uh, the third level is uh, dedicated specifically to the boss fight. And in Sonic 2, they just completely, as we'll see, they completely got rid of the three-act structure and went with two acts. There we go, that's the boss fight done. That's Wacky Workbench dealt with. And now, we are going to get to probably my favorite level in the entire game. Also, we were running at the same speed as Eggman there, which is weird. Like, Sonic running alongside Eggman but not attacking him is strange. Stardust Speedway. I know I say this about every single level in this entire game. I've already mentioned it a million times throughout this Let's Play, um, that the music is good. My god, it's just incredible. And we haven't even gotten to the best track in this zone yet. Level design wise, um, well the background is really cool, I think this level looks really pretty. However, in terms of being a level, it can be a bit wonky at times. It's very heavily based around like going through tubes and, or not tubes, but just like very tight passageways as a ball, where it's kind of automated, but kind of not, and it can be a bit weird to control. All around, though, it's not anything too difficult from what I remember, so, you know, I'm just able to chill and relax to this awesome music in the background. Oh, we're going to the future, which means we're going to get to listen to the best song uh, in this entire game. That song is so dang good, and in Sonic Mania, there's even a there's a really good uh, remix of that song. And we're gonna get to listen to the song again here because we're because since we didn't get a good future in the first two levels, it's a bad future in the third one. That's actually the funny thing is that the past always takes place like as Eggman is setting up his evil plan here and the future always takes place during uh, zone 3 or act 3 anyways here's the boss fight against Metal Sonic we've seen this guy like occasionally before this point or I think just once now it's time to race him we don't even get to attack him this is just a straight up race to the finish and he's not holding anything back this is actually quite a difficult boss fight, at least in my opinion. I remember as a kid playing through this, I struggled so much with this. I died several times. 
Uh, you know, we don't have to worry about lives here, so it's not as big of a bad thing as if we lose, but still not good if we die. Ow! Dang it. Okay. Alright, time for the rematch. It's all about memorizing where the spikes are, because they will absolutely slow you down if you don't remember where they are. That one I just guessed. I just jumped and it worked out for me. Think we're at the end here? Yes, okay. Only needed two attempts. But yeah, Son Metal Sonic has now been destroyed, kinda, and that's a plot thread that'll later be picked up in Sonic 4. I don't think I'll ever play through Sonic 4 on this channel though, because I don't really like those games. I don't know if I'd say they're ter absolutely terrible, but I don't know, I just got bored while playing them, and I think they look kinda ugly, so. I don't know. Anyways, we're now in the final level of Sonic CD, Metallic Madness. I've only been going for 20 minutes so far, so I guess I'll just go ahead and continue on till we beat Sonic CD. This level actually has lyrics for its background music, that's pretty cool. This level kinda... encapsulates, at least from what I've seen so far. Like, kind of this problem that I have with a lot of the level design is that it feels so cluttered. I feel like a lot of the platforms and walls and stuff like that are too close together to really make playing through this any fun. I'm sorry if it feels like I'm complaining a lot these past two episodes. Um, again, once again, let me restate, I don't hate this game. I just think it's the least fun out of the, um, four games in the Sonic Origins collection. That's the end of Act 1. Alright, I think it's confirmed for a fact that I won't get the good ending for this game, because I'm remembering now. I was like, this feels a lot worse than when I normally play through it. And that's because uh, the good ending version of this, uh, of these levels is, like, it's a lot brighter and a lot more sunny and feels just a lot more vibrant, uh, as all of the good future levels are. But playing through the normal version, it's very clunky and cluttered together. So that's more of a reason to, you know, get the good futures for these levels, is that the level design is worse than all of the other versions. If that was actually an intentional design choice on their part, I think it's interesting. Not one I'm, I'm particularly fond of, but I see the vision. Um, so yeah, and I can see why a lot of people would really like that, because it really does give them incentive to, you know, play through the game properly. Again, the reason I don't really go for the good future using the time travel mechanics is, like, when you mess up once, um, then that's, like, that's it, I'm pretty sure. You just, you know... You either restart the entire game, or you get the bad ending. And that kind of sucks. I remember... I was... I was like, you know what, I'll do a playthrough where I go through and I get all of the... And I, you know, I destroy the machines. And I read online in a guide, because there are multiple different machines hidden throughout the levels. And I remember reading a guide that you only needed to destroy one of those machines per level, and then you could, you know, progress and get the good future. And maybe that's right, my game just glitched out, but I destroyed one of the machines, and then it still gave me the bad future. So, I don't know what happened there, I don't know if the guide was wrong, or if my game just bugged out and I got unlucky. Also, Tiny Sonic. One of the greatest parts of this game is that 
For some reason, Sonic just turns really tiny for a little bit. He runs into a laser and it's just a shrink ray, apparently. One of the reasons that this is so memorable to me is for the Sonic CD mobile port. If you get that, I remember that the game actually gave you like stickers that you could that you could use for you know when you're texting people and this tiny Sonic was one of them and I thought it was really funny. I think this is actually a really oh glitch into the floor there. Just as I was about to praise the game it breaks for a second. Um just as I but yeah, I actually think this is a really fun mechanic, you know, going into tight places that you normally can't. Oh, crap, you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> um, but yeah, going into tight places that you're normally not supposed to. Um, and I feel like there are disadvantages to being small too, but I forget what they are. But yeah, I just think this is really fun. Ow, got crushed. Speaking of buggy and glitchy games, and speaking of... Um, I don't know, games with animal mascots. Recently, it was the 10th anniversary of the Five Nights at Freddy's series, which is something I've been a fan of. And there were two, like, official games released during the week. You know, there were some, like, official fan games, but there were also, you know, like, full-on official titles in the Five Nights at Freddy's series. Um, or at least one official title, uh, Into the Pit, which was really, really good. I had so much fun with that game. Maybe I'll play it on the channel if people are interested, I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, I had a lot of fun with that. And other than, like, an occasional bug, there wasn't really anything too bad about that game. Um, had tons of fun with it. On the other hand, they also released a demo for, like, this kart racer spin-off they're doing. Um, which a lot of people, like, or at least some people online, immediately, like, took offense to the idea of... FNAF having a kart racer. I think it's just them having a lot of goofy fun, though. Like, they, they definitely know how goofy it is for Five Nights at Freddy's to have a kart racer. And that's exactly why they're doing it, just because it's goofy fun. What's not fun is the demo, because the controls are really weird, the game looks really, like, wonky. Like, I know the game is going to release in a year and this is just a demo, but I hope the art style gets a bit of an upgrade because it just looks kind of, I don't know, clunky and weird is the best way I could describe it. It looks like everything's made out of like a weird clay. Like not in a stylistic way, but as in like everything looks weird and clumped together. Uh, but most of all, one thing that a lot of people will notice is the high amount of glitches in the game because my god, I played through it I and there are three tracks available. The first track... Oh, we're about to get to the final level in the game. But anyways, I'll finish up my uh, little rant here. The first track, I didn't notice anything too bad about the game, other than the wonky controls. The second track crashed on me half the halfway through, and then when I played through it for the second time, I got soft-locked in the middle of it, where whenever you go off course, they, like, respawn you um, back on the main course. And I guess the game thought that I was off course for some reason, um, because it kept, like, it kept teleporting me back, like, because it displays this timer, um, and then it teleports you back, and it kept doing that while I was on the main course. I was literally driving on, like, a straight path, and I still got these weird glitches. Um, also, I think this part is really cool, where you go, like, behind these walls to get away from the spike wall. Uh, and then the third track is very infamous, um, because there's this glitch that I ran to on, into on my playthrough, and a lot of people ran into, where, for some reason, the game just, like, teleports you, like, keeps teleporting you backwards, um, when you're going down this one specific area. And it's very funny, because that level, that track is based around uh, Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach, which is already an infamously buggy game, so it's very fun where, funny where that's the one that's the most glitchy. Anyways, the final boss fight, we're already here against the Egg Spinner. Now, you'll pr you're probably gonna be like, okay, TGN, how do we beat this boss fight? Here's the thing. I don't know. <laughs> I, at least I don't know the proper, like, official way to beat this. What I always just do is run into it and, like, damage boost my way into getting a hit. 
Um, and occasionally I try to like hit it how it, how you're normally supposed to do it, but damage boosting is just how I do it. If you don't have any rings, then I'm sorry, I don't know what to do on this one. Um, occasionally you might get a hit in. Um, I'll, I'll leave a link in the description to a video showing how to properly do the boss fight. Um, but you know what, this is just the best way that I could figure out how to beat the boss. Also, the music playing in the background, absolutely phenomenal. One of the best, like, final boss fight themes we've gotten in, in the entire series, in my opinion. At least in the classic games. But yeah, that's the end of Sonic CD. I got the bad ending here, but I'll leave a link to the good ending in the description. Inside your mind, you think I'm making time.